Welcome back. I have a situation and that is that when it comes to choosing Linux distributions, every Linux user goes through phases of distro hopping. And while I can't exactly use those terms to describe the situation I'm in right now, it's something like that. Here's the situation. Choosing Arch is ridiculously hard. Choosing Linux in general is difficult, I'll grant you, but choosing Arch in particular or a distribution based on Arch is becoming increasingly difficult for a number of reasons and most of those are good reasons but it's still difficult. What I mean by this is that we have a lot of great quality Linux distributions focused on desktop use for regular everyday Linux enthusiasts who just want to get stuff done. That's where I sit. I am not a uh, somebody that has to work professionally in IT. I'm not a software developer and at this point many of you might click away. I'm a casual gamer, I do a bit of video editing and I'm a high school teacher so I do some of that sort of stuff. And when it comes to what I need out of a Linux distribution has mostly been served by Ubuntu and Debian based distros with a little bit of Fedora along the way. So I figured it was time to jump back into the world of Arch because honestly my terminal commands in the Arch Linux space are getting very rusty indeed. So what I thought I'd do is I'd bring you guys along on the journey of actually choosing one of these things and then starting to run it uh, or at least attempting to getting it set up etc etc. So this is not so much a distro hopping episode as much as it is about let's discover what are the different options out there if you're wanting to choose an Arch based distro to run and what might be the pros and cons of each of those as I'm interpreting them. Some of these have been around for some time, others have been uh, have joined the chat since last I checked out Arch Land. So have your memes at the ready, give your suggestions down below as to what I should check out and get ready for I use Arch, by the way. All right, so when we're talking about Arch Linux, we can't really start the conversation anywhere other than running vanilla Arch. And this is something that I did do uh, quite some years ago now. Uh, in fact, I might put a card to that video so that you can go and check that out. But Arch Linux uh, by its own description is meant to be a simple, lightweight, minimalist distribution that uh, that is very much build your own adventure. And, uh, and many would argue that this is the way that Linux is meant to be done. Uh, now, nowadays though, Arch Linux is more known for a slightly more elitist uh, user base and possibly one of the greatest innovations that we have in the open source packaging software world, and that is the Arch user repository. Back in the day, this was one of the best ways to get hard to get software installed on your system uh, because it basically streamlined the whole building from source hassle. And so while the AUR is still great, it has, uh, in my use cases anyway, been superseded by a lot of the standardized packaging formats like Flatpak and Snap that are just infinitely more secure than what the AUR ever was. Now, that is to say that Arch Linux, if you're gonna go about doing it uh, and you want to learn a bunch in the process, is best to start there. And my, my suggestion would stand true for any other large distribution which has a lot of derivatives. All of these big distributions that have been around for a long time are well established for a reason. However, derivatives exist and there are lots of good ones in the Arch space. I do want to give an honorable mention to Manjaro, but honestly, in my book anyway, Manjaro is not really an Arch based distro anymore. Uh, I think there is some shared heritage there and at one point Manjaro definitely derived its uh, package base and the rest of it from Arch and while an argument could be made that this still happens, Manjaro is very much its own project now and it runs pretty much independent of what Arch does. So while Manjaro is fantastic, in my mind I don't really count it as an Arch based distro anymore. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Let me know what you think down below. Uh, but here are some of the other ones that I've picked up on since uh, checking out in Archland. Um, one of the ones that caught my attention in 2020 was Garuda Linux. So Garuda Linux seems to be an Arch based distribution with a really nice implementation of the different desktop environments. And you can kind of take your pick as to which ones you prefer. And it also has quite a few little optimizations and tweaks along the way to optimize gaming 
probably more so than others. Uh, but it also has a, a lot of little tools that make it really easy to manage some of the headaches that come with an Archbase system. So if you want to have a little bit more control over what your AUR installs are doing, you can do that. If you want to have a little bit more control over what your uh, over what your Arch system is doing. And it's taken a few cues here from Manjaro in terms of managing hardware drivers, kernels, etc. It gives you graphical tools to get those things done, which I appreciate. And it gives you a fantastic suite of software to get going with Linux gaming, which I think is, again, really, really helpful for the right person. Now, for me personally, where do I rate this particular distribution? Oh, shout out to the Linux Zen kernel as well. Basically, a, a, just an optimized version of the Linux kernel directed for multimedia and gaming. Uh, but the, the pros of Garuda Linux, at least from what I'm picking up and my testing in virtual machines and that kind of thing, seems to indicate that Garuda Linux is about getting that RGB action going in as quick a time as possible. And they have been able to create a really well curated desktop Linux experience for those that want to use the flexibility and power and performance of an Arch-based system and apply it to the gaming world. Uh, so Garuda Linux, it looks really nice and it definitely has that, it's got a look and the look is pretty darn good if you're into that kind of thing. All right, another one that is, uh, I don't really know if I can describe it as a Arch-based distribution because while there is a list provided by the fabulous Arch Wiki about uh, active distributions based on Arch, and there's a bunch of them, some of these, I don't know if I would count them as Arch-based anymore. For example, Car OS or Chaos, or I don't really, I'm not really sure how you pronounce half of these things, but uh, Chaos, Chaos, I'll call it chaos for now, is a, uh, a KDE Plasma desktop. This distribution was at one point based on Arch, but nowadays it is independent, kind of in the same way that Manjaro is. But let me make one thing clear, chaos, chaos is a very different beast to anything like Manjaro. Uh, it is basically trying to be the best curated KDE Plasma experience on 64-bit hardware as a independent project. So it's trying to be lean, mean, and focused on delivering a fantastic QT or KDE experience. And uh, I think it's doing a pretty darn good job. Uh, in terms of software availability and that kind of thing, this is where these uh, the Arch approach of flexibility above all begins to diverge from what Chaos uh, brings to the table. So officially, this isn't really on my list, but I thought I'd bring it up because it's one that I recognize from years past. Now, the one that everybody seems to be buzzing about most of all is Endeavor OS. And this is something that uh, there was, there were, back in the day, there was a community distribution uh, that was a spin-off of Arch called Antergos. Antergos? Uh, and that distribution was a fantastic project that a lot of people really loved. Clearly not, a lot, not enough people loved it because it went away eventually. Um, and obviously there's probably more to the story there than what I have um, dreadfully oversimplified that as. But uh, a lot of the community that really enjoyed Entergos created Endeavor OS, I think in 2019, could be wrong again about that. Um, but they have uh, carried the torch on in creating a, uh, a terminal based, terminal centric, arch based distribution, uh, but given it a few more features and buffs to make it a little more approachable and, uh, and easy to get going. So a custom implementation of the Calamara's installer makes it very easy to get up and going with whatever window manager you want to choose. And in theory, this desktop is uh, desktop agnostic, meaning that it doesn't prefer or prioritize one desktop environment over another. But the good news is, is that when you do get going with this distribution, you're getting going with a well curated starting base for you to build whatever software you want to build on top of that. And honestly, this is kind of the happy middle ground and the reason why I think Endeavor OS has found such a happy community. Now, again, when it comes to rating how popular Linux distributions are, it is nearly impossible. According to the metrics that were used in years past, DistroWatch page rankings and the like, those metrics became very quickly unreliable and not useful. However, just by general buzz and chatter around the internet, it would seem that the Endeavor OS uh, project has grown rather healthily 
and, uh, and quickly over the last two and a half, three years or so. And it seems to be able to strike that really perfect balance between giving a flexible arch-based user experience while also offering enough curation that you're not pulling your hair out wishing that you'd installed a different init. So, ladies and gents, unless there is another suggestion that I have just wildly forgotten about, let me know below. I think this is the one that I'm gonna start experimenting with. As you can see, I've got the image up and running here in boxes, and I do plan on experimenting with Endeavor OS a little bit further in boxes in a virtual machine, and then I'm going to uh, explore whether or not I could switch my everyday production slash casual gaming slash do whatever I need to do system to something like Endeavor. So on first boot of Endeavor OS, we get a fantastic little getting started tool and a few other bits and pieces, but there's actually not a lot here, which is what makes this project so interesting to me personally. You get a little quick start installer, which basically provides you with a checkbox approach to installing games, apps, and whatever else you're looking to get going. You can configure your updates, you can get the firewall going, which you should, and you can use the reflector tool to set up your repositories uh, and get those mirrors working on a decent internet connection speed uh, if it didn't do that automatically during the install, which it appears in my case that it has. And then of course you've got the little welcome tool as well, which prompts you to do all of those things that you should do with a new Arch system. For example, running the updates, making sure your display manager is working the way you want it to. And then it lets you loose into the AUR and others. So I hope this has been fun for you as it has been for me. Let me know in the comments below if I am missing something here when it comes to Arch based distributions, but I possibly might have found a contender with Endeavor OS. Stay tuned for the next part in this series coming to a sub box near you.